Thankful for good ground. Amen. Amen. So, anybody know what verse we're on? Eight. Ten. I thought ten, but I could be mistaken. Actually, I've got eleven, so I got. Eleven. Verse eleven. It says, by the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Now, whenever Abraham was interceding for Lot, how many people ended up, did, it, did he need just to save the city? If he could find just what? Ten. Ten. And then it was down to just anybody almost. Yeah. You know? But see, whenever, do you remember when I was talking to open the service, it said, if you, when you get to a place and they receive you, bless them, let your peace reside. And then if they don't receive you, it says, take your peace with you. Because see, there's an anointing on us that we can cause a place to be blessed. Or we, now we're not cursing the place, we're just taking our blessing with us when we go if they don't want to receive us. Do y'all see that? Yeah. And so, that's why whenever God is, is made the, the, the head of a city, when he's made the most important thing, that city is blessed. When the wicked are in rule, it says they're overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. That means everything they do is going to come to run. It may not look like it right then. It may not happen right then. But how many know when a seed goes in the ground, it will come forth to harvest? Mm -hmm. Some people, because it doesn't come, in, we live in such a microwave society these days, people think because it didn't instantly manifest that they're not going to have to reap it. And then a little while down the road, they're like going, what happened? Where did all this come from? Come on, are you with me? Yes, sir. So the city is built up by the blessing of the upright. So we have the authority and the ability, by the, by, if we keep our hearts right and live right, to build up a city. Amen? Amen. It says, but it is torn down by the mouth of the wicked. When right living people bless the city, it flourishes. So that means tonight we say, Lord, we bless Springfield to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. And Lord, anything that's not of you or from you, we rebuke in Jesus' name. Now we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principles and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. How many know there's some spiritual wickedness over in the capital? Amen. <laughs> And so, but we have the authority to bless it where things of God can come forth, but that does not, that does not mean there won't be opposition, right? right yeah. But we can prevail. But the thing is, I don't think most people realize they have that ability, and most people are staying quiet with their voices. Are y'all with me? Amen. For eight years, I lived under the shadow of the Capitol. And I used to sit there and just lob bombs in there all day long. <laughs> by the blessing of the upright is a city exalted, but by the mouth of the wicked it is overthrown. By the blessing of the upright the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. A city becomes great when the righteous give it their blessing. <laughs> See, if they receive you, you give your blessing. And it becomes great. But a city is brought to ruin by the words of the wicked. Can you trust somebody's a wicked person's word? No. Do you want to do business with them? No. How about somebody that has, has a character and integrity? <laughs> do what they say they're going to do. Yes. You want to do business with that, right? Yes. And, and that also comes down, it's, it's very much deeper than this, but it also comes down to the very basics of this verse. <clears throat> but we have an authority in the spiritual realm as people that walk holy before God to bless a place. And we can. And we should. Moving on for time's sake. Think I can get through this whole chapter tonight? Anybody what do you think? He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. Before I read the rest of this, all these, uh, so... A man that doesn't have any word of God in him will pretty much badmouth his neighbor 24-7. If anybody ever does him wrong, everybody and their brother will hear about it first. 
and he'll just run his rattle trap. But a man of understanding knows to keep his mouth shut, because even if he keeps his mouth shut, he looks smart. He looks like he's full of wisdom, even if he's not. That's what another proverb says. And you know, I, I was told as a young man, I don't care if you got to bite your tongue off, just keep your mouth shut. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say <laughs> nothing at all. But you know what I found? That only pertains to people they think they don't want to hear what you have to say. That's right. Because then you get around somebody wants to hear what you have to say and your rattle trap starts rattling. And you'll never believe what they did. I did it. Well, you, uh, you don't want to be that person. We're going to see why. It says, whosoever shows contempt for his neighbor lacks sense. <laughs> but a man with understanding keeps silent. Because, see, he understands that the battle's not his, it's the Lord's. And if he'll keep his heart right, God will fight his battles for him. <laughs> Mean-spirited slander is heartless. I mean, you know it is. Uh -huh. Does anybody enjoy having that done to them? Uh -huh. Quiet discretions accompanies good sense. He that despises his neighbor is void of wisdom, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. Now, I'm going to tell you that when you first start growing in the Lord, holding your peace is not easy. It's not something your flesh just goes, yay, let's do this. <laughs> you've got to bridle that thing. The Word of God says you've got to, bridle, you've got to, you've got to pit a bit in its mouth and show it to his boss by the Word of God and say, you don't get to say whatever you want. You don't get to do whatever you want. I'm boss over you, and the greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world or he that wants to be in my mouth. <laughs> and that's how it works when you first start. Because how many, don't raise your hand, or maybe you're, maybe you're just everybody, maybe I'm the only one that was ever this way. But when I was younger in the Lord, I used to, I used to think I knew a lot more than I actually know now. I thought I had it all figured out. You know, the longer I serve God, the less I know, just yeah. for the record. There's quite a few things I'm, that I'm pretty sure I'm on, but I definitely do not think I've got it all figured out. And until I got it figured out, I'm not going to open my mouth and remove all that. <laughs> yes, sir. Right there, right there, what you just said, you know, I think that's uh, pretty much what got me. You know, uh, because I was uh, I was clean for a long time, you know, ten years and three months. And I thought I had it all figured out, you know. I, I got this. You know, and look what happened. Yeah. I didn't have figured out. Yeah. Pride comes before the fall. That's what I was doing. That, that, that's what that's one of my big things. Is pride. That's it. Well, thank God He delivers us from all that. Yeah. Amen. 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 Which one was I on? I'm moving fast. But we'll do the last one. It is foolish to speak scornfully of others. If you are smart, you will keep quiet. Anybody want to be smart? Yes. All you got to do is keep quiet. <laughs> but how do you answer that? <laughs> <laughs> if I say something, then. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write it. We're just reading it together. <laughs> but you know, because when God wants you to open your mouth, He makes room for it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it opens itself. Amen. Even you can have the right thing to say and be 100% on target, but if they're not going to receive it, it's going to do nothing but, uh, the, the, but uh, cause slander, cause a hurt. Mm -hmm. belittle someone, even when you mean it in love, if it's not the appointed time, it's better off not said. Exactly right. And uh, those are things we grow in with the Lord. We grow in, As we grow in understanding of the Lord, that's what it means. And we're able to hold our peace. Amen? Amen. 13. <coughs> flying. thought we're flying today. <laughs> I spent two weeks on one verse before. Mm -hmm. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Now, this is something that's almost lost today. But a talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Now, 
Well, okay. A gossip goes around revealing a secret, but a trustworthy person keeps a confidence. A gad about gossip can't be trusted with a secret, but someone of integrity won't violate a confidence. And if you've been around me, this you could also call this tail bear a, a drama person. They like stirring drama. They like stirring discord. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you have to, when, you, when, you, when you're in a relationship with someone, you have to know what you tell them doesn't go any further. Because mm -hmm. they might even tell the truth to somebody else, but it may not be in the same light you revealed it. And they mm -hmm. may not have any ill things at, at harm, and they may be going... I don't think there's anything wrong, but that other person may have view, take the view of a very different way, and it can call, cause harm to someone. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't your, and it wasn't yours to share. You're like, well, they told me, yeah, they confided in you, but it wasn't your information to give away. If you've not asked them, can I share this? I don't care how simple it is. You should keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Amen. Otherwise, that makes you a tail bearer, and the people think, well, that means someone that purposely, well, no, it means you went and told something you had no business of sharing that wasn't yours to share. So he that, he that goeth about as a tail bearer reveals secrets, but he that is a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. That means not only do they not tell, they, they do their best to guard it from anybody else. They're not out to expose you. They're out to help you. Now listen, I'm not going to cover up your sin. I'm going to expose your sin to you and God, help you get delivery of it, but I'm not going to expose your shortcomings to everybody else. And if somebody comes, did you know this, Pastor? And I'll just change the subject. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie for you. I'm not going to do anything else, but I know how to change the subject. Mm -hmm. I'm mature enough to keep a, change the subject or keep my mouth closed. But if keeping my mouth closed is going to be what they think can determine for a yes, I'm just going to change the subject because I'm not going to give somebody any admonition about you. So, uh, whosoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing covered. One who brings gossip betrays a confidence. Anybody, and that's truly what it is. You know, trust is a valuable commodity. And once it's broken, God, it's not broken forever like the world says. God can restore it. He can, he can heal it. And he can make you trust again because you can trust God to take care of things. But until that person is healed, delivered, and changed, you're probably not going to trust them with, with confidential matters again. And... You know, once you've broken my confidence, uh, I'm going to put you on a on a timeout slip. I'm not going to write you off. You're in timeout to see if you can regain yourself and get your act back together. Do you all follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And so then it goes on to... Uh, Whoever goes about slandering reveals things, reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in his spirit keeps things covered. One who brings gossip betrays a confidence. This is right. But one who is a trustworthy spirit is one who keeps a secret. No one who gossips can be trusted. Let me tell you, if they'll talk about if they'll talk about somebody else to you, they're they're talking about you to somebody else. And people that like to talk about other people don't need to come talking to me. Period. And if you've got that, I'm just going to tell you, you need deliverance from it because it's going to harm you from growing in that area. Amen. And because they can be trusted, no one who gossips can be trusted with a secret. But you can put confidence in someone who is trustworthy. Now, how many of us Christians as believers, we need to be trustworthy. Yes. We need to be somebody that they know when they come to us, it's not going no further. Amen. And I'll tell you, as pastor in this day and time we live in, especially this digital age, you know, sometimes it can be difficult because with text messages and with all these other things, it, it could happen where something was said or done that you didn't have much control if you don't know what I'm talking about then good praise mm -hmm. God you've never had to do it but how I, how God has led me to deal with it he said whoever whatever you're talking about the other end you should have no problem ever letting you know, just handing your device over to the other individual and say well here read it for yourself what was going on exactly yeah. 
If you can do that, then your 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 heart is clean. But if you if you got a check in your spirit about them reading what you're talking about, then you you're doing something wrong. Yep. Big smile. Amen. Amen. And so uh, now. Here's the thing. I'm I'm not been expounding much on these. I think they go without saying. You really, I don't think they need a lot of. I mean, so these don't need a ton of explanation. They're pretty much solid wisdom, yeah. just pure good wisdom. But how many would admit in the day we're living in that it's more of the first half than the second half? Mm -hmm. Almost all of society gossip. That's just how they do. If you work in a workplace, whether they're talking about the boss, they're talking about the person down the road, the guy that came in dressed funny, you know, someone else over here, and all you in society peer pressure, all you want to be is just not the one that's getting talked about. But if you're more concerned about what God has to say about you than what people has to say about you, you'll change and you'll walk in love. And you and, 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 and you can walk in love to such a place, and trust me, I know I've done it for a long time, where they'll come talk to you about matters of the heart that matter because they know you're not going to talk. And they'll come to you to pray, and they'll come to you to do something. But if, the, if, you, if you were in there just laughing about Jim Bob and Jolene, they're not going to trust you in their world's upside down. Mm. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. That's right, Serenity. <laughs> Verse 14. I've probably quoted this verse a million times inside counseling sessions <laughs> because... There's something in the world today where nobody wants to be accountable to anybody else. Yeah. I'm your own. I'm my own person. I'm doing my own thing, and I don't owe you nothing. If I come to church here, fine. If I don't come to church here, fine. If I do this, fine. If I'm working here, it's just to bless you. When if something better comes along, then <laughs> I'm out of here. I don't need. I'll take. I'll take your advice. But if I advice, I can. I can give or take. It doesn't matter. I've heard you out. Now counseling's kind of the same way, but. How many know when you're taking someone's advice, sometimes you're just waiting for them to stop talking? <laughs> Come on. Amen. Especially if you didn't ask for it. Oh, yeah. But sometimes you'll even ask for it, and as soon as they start saying something that you don't agree with, you all you hear is, nah, 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 nah. Oh, yeah. oh, you're done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> But here is this. It says, where no counsel is, the people fall. As pastor of Broken Chains Church, number one, I listen to God, number one. But I also, if you've been around me very long, I care what everybody in this church thinks, what's going on. We've never made one big thing, big move as a body that I haven't consulted the church and said, what do y'all think? I, I could have already heard from God, but there's been different times people have brought up different aspects that was really good. Because without counsel, you're going to fall. You're going to make a mistake. If you think you know all the answers, you're in big trouble. Mm -hmm. And you need to have people around that can give you that. But uh, so it's not if you fall. If you decide to just do it your own way and never listen to anybody else, you're looking, you're just waiting to make the big smack. Mm -hmm. it says, but in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. See, because when there's a multitude in there, every one of somebody, if they're all listening to God and they're seeking God, they're going to hear everything and they're going to lay it all out for you. So you've got a good vision of what's about to partake. <laughs> and anytime you're about to do anything of any kind of significance in your life. You need to get godly counsel. Amen, amen. And not just because I'm your pastor and you're here tonight, but if you're seeking counsel, one of those would at least better be your pastor. I didn't say he could be your only one, but he better be one of them speaking into your life He's because he's the one that's going to give an account for your soul. It amazes me people go and hire life coaches and they go to their friends and they go to Jim Bob, this pastor over here and that pastor over there because they want to hear what they want to say, but the one that's going to answer for them, they never go and talk to them. They never say, this is going on in my life. It's what I'm thinking about. What are, you, what are you hearing from God? Now, if they think he's going to agree, a lot of times they will. But if they think there's a chance that they won't, they'll go talk to everybody else. Until <laughs> they find the answer they want. And, and listen, I'm not trying to make this about me, but I'm trying to say this is what's common. What I'm describing is what's common today. Okay. And we see people falling all the time. 
Yeah, and I didn't say just go do exactly what your pastor said. You know, there's sometimes those mimes are funny. I really made a mess now. I'm going to go do what my pastor said the first time. You know, that's not what I'm, I'm saying. He should be one of the ones you're seeking in a multitude of counselors. Amen. Amen. And by the way, they all have to be believers in case you didn't know that. And they do be mature believers. So. Without guidance, people fall. But with many counselors, there is deliverance. With good direction, without good direction, people lose their way. The more wise counsel you follow, the better your chances. And how many know the more you seek counsel from your pastor, different things, the better off, you know, it's going to be because you're going to hear the voice of God. Now listen, if I don't have, I'll give you what wisdom I have, and I'll give you what the Word of God says, and if I have anything prophetic, I'll give that. But I'm also not going to work it up. I'm not going to tell you, well, thus saith the Lord, if I don't know, you're going to say, I'll, hear, I'll say, well, this is the, what I hear and see from the Lord, and then I'm going to pray with you that you'll get wisdom on the matter. Amen? Amen. And so, why am I saying this? Because some people can tell everybody else how to live their life, but if they're not living it already themselves, you should not be taking advice from them. Amen. And a lot of times, there is also people today that have all kinds of titles, they're going around trying to tell everybody else how to life coach, and they're not. They it's it, it, they throw in a little scripture in it, but it's not really from God. They don't have your best interest at heart. And so, why am I saying this? Because they quote these scriptures to validate their ministries and the things they do. And if you haven't run into that, praise God. All right, but does everybody know what Pastor is talking about? Yes. So I 100% believe in this verse. It's part of the Bible. I believe we should do it 150%. But there are some wolves out there that are using it to suck you in for dummy things. Don't go there. All right? You all are awful serious. Nobody took your lunch money, did they? Some of you are like, getting concerned. All right. <laughs> Where there is no guidance, the nation falls. But the multitude of counselors, there is victory. By the way, if you didn't know, this is one verse that our nation was founded on. This is why we have a Congress. Did you all know that? No. Yep. A nation will fall if it has no guidance. Many advisors mean security. They looked at the Word of God when they set it up, and they said, Lord, this is what the Word of God says. So they wanted believers who would give them guidance and counsel, and that's where our nation was founded upon. Amen. And that's where deacons and deaconesses and all those things come into the church. You know, and until we grow on major things, I still ask the church, you know, if I, you know, we're, we're, we're going to move to Chicago. Anybody want to go? And everybody would go, no. <laughs> See, what, wasn't that easy? <laughs> Did you receive a good counsel? <laughs> yeah. Good. I believe we've heard from the Lord. No Chicago. What was it? <laughs> Number 14. Oh, we already got that. 15. He that is surety for a stranger, stranger shall smart for it, and he that hateth surety ship is sure. Don't co-sign for your brother, sister, uncle, Jim Bob, or anybody else. Don't put nothing you have up for anybody else. Don't stand in for somebody else. Let them be surety for themselves. Let them learn how to take care of their own money, and don't be trying to support them or encourage them on because you're going to put yourself in a mess and it's going to cost you. Yep. That's the word of God. And it can continue to cost you. Yeah. If someone puts up security for a stranger, a lot of people say, well, he's not a stranger. Uh, this isn't the only verse on, on co-signing. Trust me, he's talking mm -hmm. about. So if he puts up security for a stranger, he will suffer for it. But the one who hates such agreements is protected. So if you hate and there's another verse that says that the borrower is slave to the lender. Mm -hmm. Now, did God say we were going to hell if we borrowed money? He mm -hmm. did not. But this pastor will tell you that you're going to be a slave. It's going to own you until that loan is paid off. Yeah. And you have to decide if you're willing to saddle up and literally be a slave to that thing. 
So am I telling you that you can't? No, I had some people once they first start when I first started teaching on this thought, he's teaching you can't borrow money, you can't do oh, how are you supposed to get anything? Well you're supposed to save it actually. But just know that you uh, you'll be a slave to the lender. Mm -hmm. Nobody I don't want to be a slave to anything. And I've had to borrow some money, and guess what? I was. I was a slave to that thing until the moment I paid it off. But here, if you'll hate co-signing and trying to support somebody else's debt, you so here and what makes it easy if you if you hate having any debt yourself. If you hate having hate hate having debt yourself, you sure am not gonna go and uh, help somebody else get debt. Yeah. Right? And it'll leave you, it won't put you in a mess, and you'll be sure you'll just lead a peaceful life. Amen. Whoever deals with strangers is sure to get burned. I, I can't tell you how many times, and it's sad, really, it's not funny at all, but I can't tell you how many times throughout the years as pastor that I've seen someone, I just, I continually see people get themselves in bad places, co signing for somebody else, and they get burned, and then they go to God, where, God, where was God at? And I'm like, well, uh, you probably don't want to hear this right now. And I don't always tell them. I don't. Y'all know me better than that. But Proverbs chapter 11, verse 15 says you're going to get burned if you co-sign. I thought that was a pretty good red flag. If you'd have read your Bible and got some wisdom, you would have never signed on the dotted line. You should see people that when they're just learning, getting in the Word of God, when you quote this verse to them, they act like you got three heads. They're like, that's not in there. You didn't say that. That's not what he means. <laughs> he that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it, but he that hateth surety ship is secure. Whoever puts up security, whoever put, sometimes see they even want you to put up security, something you own, not just your name. They want you to put up your house, your car, your boat for a stranger will surely suffer. Does it say he might suffer? No, it's surely. So that means even if it pays off, this is going to be a painful experience for you. Can anybody that's ever done it before testify that it was a painful experience? So there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. I want you to notice that in the Word. He doesn't say that you might. He says you will. Even if they pay it off, it's still going to be a pain. I'm so glad that God even cares about the small things. Isn't that cool? Not that it's too small if you've ever had one of those things strangled around your neck. Sure. So then it goes on to say, but he who hates striking hands and pledge is secure. That means I'm not going to... You know, used to you could just shake your hand and the deal was done. Yeah. But now you know the Bible says a man keeps his word to his own hurt. So let me tell you, I ain't putting my hand to your hand until I've prayed, I've heard God, and I've got the peace of God. I'm not even going to loan you no money. I ain't co-signing for nobody, so there you go. But before we enter into any kind of shaking of hands, I'm going to make sure I've heard God. I don't enter into anything lightly. Covenants are a big deal with God. He who is collateral for a stranger will suffer for it, but he who refuses pledges of collateral is secure. So if you want to be secure, don't give, don't give up collateral. Don't give securities. Don't co-sign. Don't give up anything you own. If you promise to pay a stranger's debt, you will regret it. You are better off if you don't get involved. How many of you if you don't get involved, nobody can be offended? Right. Well, pastor, they've asked me. Oh, okay, they ask you. Just say, well, I don't do that. And if you don't do it for anybody, it makes it even easy to say no to everybody, right? That's right. If you don't do it for anybody, it makes it easy to say no to everybody. To go, hey, I uh, I don't do that. In, in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 15, the Lord's told me I can't. And uh, he said, well, he didn't, he didn't tell me he can't. He said, I wouldn't want to. But they'd be really painful. I don't like pain, yeah. so it's nothing against you, but I'm not going to do this. And you'll be those kind of look at you. Big old eyes, dumbfounded. And they just walk away. They don't have nothing to say. Somebody says, you act like you've done it before, Pastor. I have. Lots. Cause... 16. A gracious woman retaineth honor 
and strong men retain riches. A gracious woman gains honor, but violent men gain only riches. A woman of gentle grace gets respect, but men of rough violence grab for loot. A gracious woman obtaineth honor, and violent men obtain riches. A gracious woman gets honor, and violent men get riches. A gracious woman obtains honor, but violent men obtain riches. A gracious woman is respected, but a woman without virtue is disgrace. Lazy people will never have money, but aggressive people will get rich. <coughs> so, Proverbs 31 talks about a woman who's far worth more than rubies, and you can see here that a gracious woman, she'll get honor, respect, she'll maintain it. And violent men, they're just going to search after money. They're going to rob, steal, pillage, and plunder, and they're going to never be happy. And so, ladies, I think it's really good that, you know, someone say, well, they're just, do they ever fight for anything? Well, you know what? I, I believe sometimes just that spirit of meekness, gentleness, it can fight better than anything any man could do, if you know what I'm saying. So I believe that's God's encouragement there. So you get respected, but I like this other verse. I don't really like it, but it brings it out. It says, but a woman without virtue is a disgrace. And lazy people will never have money, but aggressive people will get rich. See, a lot of times people go, well, at least I'm not lazy. And they're out there calling for every dime they can get. They get rich, but they're miserable. Mm -hmm. And they're not respected. And they're, not, and they're still not respected. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They, they think that's, what, that's what they're doing. They want respect and honor. And it's, it's a, a gracious woman, she just she retains honor. She gets respect. Everywhere she goes, people think highly of her. Something to be learned there, huh? Mm -hmm. 17. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. A kind man benefits himself, but a cruel man brings disaster on himself. God will not be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. When you're kind to help others yourself, when you're kind... When you're kind to others, you help yourself. When you're cruel to others, you hurt yourself. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. A man who is kind benefits himself, but a cruel man hurts himself. The merciful man does good to his own soul, but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. You do yourself a favor when you're kind. If you're cruel, you only hurt yourself. Now, you know, and the thing is, if most people believe this, a lot of times they would act different, and most people don't. They think they're getting by with things. But you're never getting by with things. And, you know, I, I made a statement several times throughout the years that I knew that I was going to need a lot of mercy, so I've always sold a lot of mercy. And you can see that here in this proverb. I, I, knew, that, I knew that I could be a handful to deal with them, not because I was trying, but I was growing. I'm still growing. I'm a better man than I was yesterday and last week and the year before and 10 years before that. 20 years before, I'm a better guy. But I still know it that I, I'm not perfect and I rub some people the wrong way. Not intentionally. I just do. So I'm sowing lots of mercy. So guess what? I've received lots of mercy back. Lots of mercy. But when you're cruel, when you feel like you've got to defend yourself all the time, there's going to be no Come on, are you hearing? Yes, sir. And as men, sometimes we really go, oh, I gotta defend myself, and you just, yeah, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. They's mean to me first, Pastor. What does that actually really mean? What's that? Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. I hear it all the time. It means you took my eye, I'm taking your eye. You took my tooth, I'm taking your tooth. What you did to me, I'm doing unto you. It doesn't mean anything else besides. 
Well, that's what that used to under the law. That's what used to go under some Levitical law. But Jesus said, "Yeah, yeah I, I remove that because he when he doesn't do away with the law, he fulfilled the law. Then he raised it higher with grace. And grace says, do unto others as you would have done unto you." So, all right. I think we're going to stop there for the evening. I got through quite a few. Was that Brother Kevin? You want me to go on for another hour? <laughs> I want to, but I want to have some uh, feet. We, we covered a lot of different topics. We, 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 the, these these verses are they're not a lot of times they're cohesive and they flow together. These verses are just one thought to the next thought to the next thought to the next thought. And so I'd like to, before we lose all those thoughts, I'd like to hear what you all got from tonight, Sister Heather. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut, Sister Rick. <laughs> if you keep your heart right, God will fight your battles. Amen. Good stuff. When you were talking about uh, the, the, the wicked man or the cruel man hurts himself, anyone who's usually a fighter has a target on their back. Because if somebody knows they'll fight, they'll fight. You know? Yeah. Amen. Very true. And that goes, I mean, just, just arguments even. Yeah. 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 I've seen that, and God's just looking us to, the Bible says, a gentle answer turneth away wrath. Mm -hmm. And that's part of being that kind and generous person. Mm -hmm. I have a problem sometimes that I want to get, in, you, know, you talked about it son, that I want to get involved with what's going on with the other people. Like, like you were saying, he done that, she, he done that, and did you hear about that? Sometimes I just want to get involved and just say something. Sometimes I do say something, Pastor, and I shouldn't do that. See, I'm knowing that now, just to stay out of it. Yeah. yeah. If it doesn't concern me, stay out of it. Even if it does concern me, the person's bad, right? Yeah, just give it to God. Yeah. Yeah. He can take care of it way better than you can. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. Sister Sean. You have the authority to prevail. You have the authority to prevail. Amen. Good stuff. Learn to take godly counsel so you won't get yourself in a mess. Amen. Ooh. Amen. Good stuff. Yeah. That was great. That uh, was great. I like that. Uh, just being reminded we had authority in the spirit realm to bless our city. Yeah. I like mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Anybody else tonight? Brother John. Don't speak until God gives you the, the okey dope. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and I'll add to that a little bit. And uh, after you've been doing all these things for a long time, you don't you don't have to like consciously think about them. They become part of who you are. Which means that sometimes people will pick something up on that you've forgotten about that you're doing for a long time. And it was a few years ago, someone had made a statement about me and they made it to me. It was about me and they made it to me. And it was really a compliment, but at first I didn't quite know how to take it because I didn't realize that I was even doing what they were saying anymore. And they, they said, Pastor, you really choose your words very carefully. And, uh, and I said, yeah, I do, but I'd forgotten. There was a time in a season of my life I didn't. Now, I don't do that. I do that out of these scriptures we're learning. I learned these verses. And I learned that words mattered. But I didn't, you know, at first I had to train myself. But now it's just part of who I am. Before I even, and you, most of you all know this, I'm sure when you come ask me something, I don't just tell you the first thing that pops off my head. I, I kind of pray for a moment, meditate in my spirit, see what the Spirit of God saying, see if I got anything to respond to that or what the Word of God says. I found that when you say the Word of God, you can't ever go wrong as long as you say it in love. Right. Now, I haven't met a few people that gave the Word of God and it wasn't in love, and it was about as sour as a persimmon. Because they were, it wasn't really the Word, they were twisted. Yeah. yeah. And when, you, when, when, a lot of times when, when the Lord will 
uh, I don't know how I want to word it, uh, possibly inspire you to, to uh, or use you to correct someone in love, a lot of times they come back at you with the word God to point out something you're doing when what you're doing has nothing to do with the situation. Yeah, that's why let's choose to love them anyways. Yeah. yeah. Love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah. That's a choice. <laughs> yeah, and it, and yeah, it's just, that's a choice. It doesn't come easy, honestly, at first. It gets easier, yeah. but it's still always a choice. Especially when you think, when you, when you don't think you know you're really right. Yeah. You know, but you can be 100% right and still be 100% wrong if your heart's wrong. Right, right. And... <laughs> It took me a lot of years to learn that, but it became very, it's invaluable to me now as a man of God. And so, anybody else on things we covered? We covered a conglomeration. Pastor Tema. Um, that a man of understanding will keep silent or hold his peace, and if you keep your heart right, God will fight your battles for you. Yep. Good shot. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody in here find it easy to keep your mouth closed? It's getting easier. <laughs> when you're, when you're, how about when you're a hundred percent right? Uh, <laughs> never right. No, but the the point I was going to make is that I don't believe it comes natural, but I believe it does come supernaturally yeah. if you allow God to work on you, and it gets easier. But you know, sometimes the enemy beats you up because you go, you realize, man, I got a lot to work on, and then. It can become overwhelming instead of going, yeah, everybody had a lot to work on. We're all trying to be more like Jesus. We're all growing in this, and we're getting better. And you can't grow in something until you need to know you need to grow in it. And that's where I found that's where it's the vital time to have spiritual counsel, somebody in your corner, a pastor or something, because when you see you need to grow in something, the enemy wants to beat you up for it. God wants to bring you up and out of it. Amen. And that often determines to, by what voices you're allowing to speak into you at that crucial moment. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. I got testimony. Well, praise God. Yeah. I'm now employed. Yes. Let's go ahead and repeat the pastor tell me what's prayer for you. And, uh, yep, it, uh, I'm a, it, it's, it was official today, however, I won't start until after the first of the year, till the holidays are over because of the training and everything, um, and that's okay. And I went to one location, cleaned out on Dirksen, put my application in, somebody told me to go over on North Grand about four blocks from where my house is, and the lady and I talked, she's a believer, um, I've known her for years since I came to this town, but I didn't know that she was a believer. Um, I knew her from another organization, and uh, we got to talking today, and we know some of the same people. And, uh, you know, it just so happened after I got the job, the gentleman who runs uh, the house where I'm at um, went by there and uh, knew that I was going there to get and put my application in, and uh, so it pretty much solidified. And now I'm at the location where I can just walk just a few blocks. Oh, praise God. That's man. Good. Restoration. That is good. Yes, Amen. 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 <laughs> it is so good to hear all this restoration work God's doing. You know, and all we got to do is just keep chasing after Him, seeking first the kingdom of God. Amen. And all these things shall be added unto us. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, today I met with a lawyer uh, in regards to getting my driver's license back. I would just like the, the church to pray for me uh, in, in regards to that. Yeah. I had a had a friend. Uh, he was a friend in the old life, and he came over. I led him back to the Lord about a year after I was, and uh, he owns... Kirk's Mobile Homes now in Missouri. If you're ever driving through, it's the biggest mobile home dealership in Missouri. Mm. And uh, he's a really he's one of my good friends. We used to minister together for for years on the streets. He had lost his license for like 25 years. Oh, it's been about 25 years since I have one. Well, he he had he had to wait, and then they told him they would never get it back. They took it for life because he had like 14 DWIs. Oh, yeah. And. Uh, 
So we prayed and he kept his heart right. And year after year, he'd go to court over it and we'd pray and he would go in there. And finally, uh, we had spoke somewhere. I don't remember, it was a meeting someplace, me and him and went and spoke together. And uh, the next time he had a, meet, a hearing, it was up at Jeff City at the government courthouse and uh, the judge was in the meeting we'd spoke at and gave him his license back. And uh, put him on strict probation for like seven years, and uh, he's blew that out of the water. Twenty nine or fifteen, I don't know. Y'all know I'm not good with very long time ago, and now he's <laughs> successful business, successful all those things. Amen. Kept his life together, keep putting God first. Amen. He didn't get bitter against it. He would say, "Well, it's not them, it's me. I'm the one that screwed up. <coughs> I'm just reaping what I sowed." He said, "I'm just asking for a little mercy." <laughs> You know, he didn't go and act like he deserved it because he forgot what he deserved. He'd still been in jail. Right. So, uh, just want to encourage you that I've seen God do. And I, he's not the only one I can go Amen. on with hundreds and hundreds of others. But uh, I do believe the key is keeping your heart right in the mat. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. Well, eight o'clock, and I'm done. Uh, it's a miracle. Amen. <laughs> Just for that, verse 17. He just came out the blue. You slept the whole time. Actually, no, not this side. Even though I had shots in my shoulder, I did not fall asleep. All right. You all are dismissed. We uh, love you all. Good to see Jason tonight. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, do we have anything this weekend? I can't remember.